Hey guys, welcome back to Buddy RC. My name is Clay and today we're gonna do a little uh, something different. Uh, today I wanted to do a introduction of myself. Um, so I've never really introduced myself uh, since I started. I just kind of hopped into it and I kind of want to tell you guys a little bit of my background in RC. Um, and I've got some videos that you guys will like because it's me as a baby basically, <laughs> as a little kid. Um, so I started flying back in, I want to say it was 2008. Um, I want to say it was like 14 or so. Uh, basically, I went to Myers and saw the original Havoc Heli. If you remember that thing, it was terrible. But I saw it and I had to have it when I was a kid. Um, so I saved up a whole bunch of money. It was a lot of money back then. I want to say it was like 70 bucks back in the day. Um, I don't know why I remember that, but I do. So basically bought that guy and uh, I'll, again, put pictures on the screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, but basically got that, thought I could do 3D with it, found out it was just an elevator basically. It would go up and down and had rudder and that was it. So I, after that, I kind of, you know, gave up on helicopters for a little bit and kind of got into planes. So I, I, I got the, God, what was that thing called? The Firebird Phantom. It was a awful, another awful plane. Um, it had this system in it that would see sky and see ground. And if this didn't see sky and this didn't see ground, it would flip itself over and make sure it would see it. So on some overcast days, you would get some weirdness or if you tried to do a loop with it, it would immediately take itself straight down into the ground and explode itself. It had like a tail boom, like a plastic or a carbon tail boom. I don't think it was carbon, it was probably fiberglass. But anyway, so I got into that, uh, kind of got into planes from there. Uh, got an Alpha 40, that was my first like large nitro. Actually, my first successful flight was with the Alpha 40 um, at my old club over in Germantown, Ohio, uh, Works RC. Um, they were all some of the you know best guys I ever met. Some of the guys there actually got me into the helicopters um, and pretty much it just snowballed out of control after this. So I was, I wanna say I was about 15 years old. Um, and I got into helicopters. I was flying planes already. So I had the Alpha 40 and then I got straight into 3D planes. Um, and one of the guys at the field were flying a big Raptor 90 and I was like, whoa, that is so cool. So I was like, well, let me, you know, look into this. So I ended up trading one of my 3D planes for a Raptor 30. And that was the best thing I ever did because now look at where I'm flying these guys now. And I absolutely love flying the big helicopters. So funny enough, actually, I do have footage of my first collective pitch flight. So when I bought the Raptor 30, um, I also got a Honeybee CP, which that thing is so old is the e sky it had a nickel metal hydride battery so actually on my way home from toledo we were going and fished basically so my dad was you know getting the boat ready and i was like well i'm gonna go fly my honey bcp it's the first time i've ever flown it so i actually got it on camera so i'll show you guys that here and i apologize for how young i look i look like a child because i was a child this was 14 years ago 15, or 13 years ago or so i was a young young kid but I was very excited about that Honey BCP, but it's a terrible helicopter. And as you'll see, I struggled with that thing. I was trying to keep it you know, going, but I basically had a lot of training on FS1, which is a really old simulator. Uh, but I learned to hover helicopters on there and actually fly helicopters on that. So the first helicopter I wanted to fly was the Raptor, but I'd rather do the Honey BCP first because if I crashed it, it's whatever. Uh, so there's the footage for that. Now, when I got done with that, I did fly the Raptor 30 finally, and that thing was intimidating uh, for being a child. <laughs> Basically, it was very intimidating because I didn't have the money to replace any of the parts on it if I crashed it. Luckily, I never did. Um, other than trying to flip it with wooden blades, that's not a good idea because wooden blades are very flexible, and I found out if you flex them way too hard, they will break. So that's the only time I crashed it. Luckily, the corn kind of took most of the brunt of the fall and it was just some head related stuff. Of course, it was fly barred, so it took forever to rebuild. It's nothing like the stuff we have today. The stuff we have today is three links, four links, sorry. And that's it. This was like 15 links and they all had to be perfectly measured out. It was wild. Um, but here's the footage of the Raptor 30 flying.
awesome. I flew that thing a ton. Absolutely loved that thing. I blew up the motor a ton in that because I had no idea what I was doing with tuning. But shortly after that, I actually got a job at my local hobby shop, the hobby shop in Dayton. Um, they actually they actually buy stuff from us here, which is actually kind of cool. Um, but basically, I got a job there. Uh, replacing their helicopter guy that just left and went to Horizon, which is actually pretty funny. He is actually the designer of most of the Blade helicopters out there, James Haley. He went and, you know, went to Horizon and I went to the hobby shop. So I worked at the hobby shop for a while and uh, they had this old T-Rex 600 NP super combo, super old helicopter, um, fly barred, and I just had to have it. After that, it was over. I was into helicopters ever since then. Um, all the way until I was about, I want to say 17 or 18, uh, Blade Helicopters was having a competition for the Blade 500X. And I was absolutely obsessed with Blade Helicopters from the small helicopters, and now they were starting to get into the bigger helicopters. Uh, so they had the Blade 500X competition. I ended up winning that competition, and with winning it, I got a TX-18 and a Blade 500X. It was crazy. It was before the Blade was even out. It was awesome. But after that, uh, went on to the Horizon team uh, for about a year. Uh, enjoyed it, it was a ton of fun. But uh, the sponsorship stuff just kinda eh, wasn't as much fun as it was all cracked up to be. So I ended up you know, stepping back from that and basically just flying for enjoyment after that. Uh, somewhere, I wanna say it was like 2016, 2017, I was 20 something years old. I ended up working for a gentleman that uh, he needed a camera operator drone. Uh, pilot. So he was the camera operator and I was the pilot. Um, we flew the, oh gosh, we flew the red camera. It was one of the first drones to be able to lift a red camera. It was the black armored drone. This thing was ginormous and crazy expensive. It was like $70,000 or something wild. Uh, and then the camera itself is another hundred. It was wild, but that's just kind of like what I've done in FPV and drones. Um, but after that, I ended up, you know, going back into helicopters, kind of getting into those. I did a little bit of drone racing, so I've done that, but I've done a lot of drone camera work uh, for Peter Schriepel. Uh, so if you've watched his ultralight video uh, of the camera, of the drone basically going right in front of him, that was actually my shot. Uh, there was some really cool stuff I've done with Peter, and eventually we're going to start working with him again, which would be nice. Uh, so also with drones, I actually got to do something pretty cool with Peter is he actually took me to Amsterdam with the Rotor Riot guys. So I went with Tommy and I also went with Stinger Swarm and we had a ton of fun. Uh, we went and it was an event called Drone Clash, which I'll show some footage of this. It was like battle bots, but for drones, it was wild. Um, we basically were battling for $30,000 for first place and it was a hard fought battle, but we ended up getting fourth, of course, the, the first to not get any money, but it was a ton of fun. It was a crazy experience to go all the way to Amsterdam for basically RC stuff. It's, it's absolutely wild. So I ended up, you know, stepping back from that and basically just flying for enjoyment after that. So here we are today. So actually how I got involved with Buddy RC is I was actually at Flight Fest. Um, and I saw a little teeny tiny helicopter flying. It was the M1 and I was obsessed with it. I was like, I, I have to fly it. Ended up talking with TJ actually, cause I, I just saw TJ walking around. I was like, hey, I know you work for Buddy RC. What do you, uh, you know, can I fly one of those? I wanna try it. So Dan actually graciously came over and handed me the controller and I immediately put it in the ground. It was in stability mode, I didn't know. Anyway, we flipped it out of stability mode, took it back off, and I was absolutely hooked. Ever since then, the OMP helicopters are all I fly. Um, so I still have that first helicopter. He actually let me fly and actually ended up giving it to me. So it, it's, it's crazy that that all happened. And then finally at Urcha last year, I got talked into basically looking into a job here. So ended up coming here and video's kind of been a passion of mine. So guys, <laughs> sorry for the long form video. 
but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of tell my story a little bit and kind of give you guys a background on what I've done. So I've flown planes, I've flown drones, I've flown helicopters, I've, I've flown just about anything. I've flown tombstones even too. So I've flown a little bit of everything. So I, that just gives you a little bit of background on me. I thought about doing this with a few of the other people that work here. Uh, maybe do a, a background on Dan, maybe do a background on Eddie. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, uh, if you guys would be even interested in that, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go fly some helicopters, so I'll see you guys later.